Last I heard, Rifat was still under the rubble. You know, such a sentence should not be meant literally, but there is no metaphor or hyperbole here. There is no poetry in this sentence. Rifat is still under the rubble and he isn't alone in this suffocation. Thousands in Gaza remain buried in debris, but airplanes still take flight, people still travel, and what's worse is that the birds still migrate. I checked this morning. I'm told it's blasphemous to ask God, I'm told it's blasphemous to ask why God has yet to show face, but it's hard to keep a faith that hasn't kept my people. Rifat is still under the rubble, and I don't think I understand the heft, the heft of such a sentence. They say there are seven stages of grief, and thus far they have all, all seven of them have been disbelief. If I stand here and read an obituary, if I told you that Rifat al-Ara'ir was a poet and professor born in 79 from Ghaz al-Shuja'iyya who earned his BA in English from the Islamic University of Gaza, which by the way was completely destroyed by Israeli airstrikes, and his masters from UCL here in London, which by the way has refused to comment on his assassination. And he also looks like you're going meow king. Um, no. Who is right? He also earned his PhD and co-founded We Are Not Numbers and co-edited Gaza Rights Back and, 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 and was one of the few sending us fragments of news and analysis despite the media blackout and, and, and. If I stand here and read an obituary, if I decorate this eulogy with kind words with a kind of shiny adjectives we only gift our friends after they have died i would be doing us all a disservice after all this is a man that loved to cuss and joke even when the bombs dropped he gave us laughter and perhaps indulge me especially as the bombs dropped he gave us laughter so i'm not going to indulge in meaningless good taste because he gave us laughter, thunderous laughter, when the world ordered us to shrink and whisper. Um, when Israeli propagandists, when Israeli propagandists made a ridiculous claim that Palestinian fighters had baked a baby in the oven, um, which, by the way, the Israeli military has denied itself, since many of you will love to hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, Rifat joked on Twitter and he said, with or without baking powder. Um, and many, many people use that against him as some kind of indictment, but to me that is so courageous and so funny and so human to be able to be able to be able to joke in the face of so much insidiousness. I mean, the claim made about baking a baby in the oven is so insidious because it invoked a real crime that took place during the Deir Yassin massacre. It replicated. It replicated the testimonies of eyewitnesses who saw Zionist soldiers throw a father and his son in an oven. What do you do with so much insidiousness? Rifat satirized it. I also don't want to sit here and draw a perfect victim portrait because perfect victims are boring and impossible. And Rifat was so courageous and funny and interesting and full of humanity. And when we try to conjure up perfect victims, we are shrinking the scope of humanity for everybody around us. When we try to dictate who is and who isn't mournable, who can we and who can't we grieve with, when we emphasize the death of women and children as though the death of our men is not our work. We are shrinking the scope of humanity for everybody else. So to leave you, I just want to invite everybody in this room to be a little bit more courageous, to be a little bit more human, to be a little bit more flawed, to satirize and ridicule and make fun because it's, there's nothing more precious than laughter. And we can't let the storm pass us by. We can't just be bystanders in this genocide. We all have an active role to play. Right there, over there, they are 
subjected to a genocide, but here we are at war, and each of us has an active role to play. Thank you so much.